So good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, the Martinsville Henry County Chamber of Commerce is pleased to bring you this update from our community partners. And my name is Lisa Watkins, and I'm president of the Martinsville Henry County Chamber. And um, as soon as Sharon's able to, to join us, I'm gonna turn our moderation over to Sharon because um, she's the best at, at doing that. So I just wanna take a moment to um, thank each of our community partners that are on the update today. And I know you've been working tires, tirelessly in our community and my hat goes off to you. And on behalf of the chamber and I know our community, we just thank you for everything that you're doing to help us um, through the pandemic and to get our community vaccinated and um, making us all safe and, and having a safer space. Um, so um, we do have Fabio with us uh, as well today. So thank you so much for being with us to help um, spread the word. And so we're just glad to have you all here taking a pause from your busy schedules to um, provide community information. Um, one thing I just wanted to say, I know out there in the community, we are all having to be super patient and I just encourage each one of us to try to continue being patient and also take um, advantage of other resources where um, vaccinations are available. Too. Um, so we, we do hope that you are able to take advantage of those and we'll be glad to share any information that we have that comes in. So um, I thought we'd um, maybe start off with our um, health department. Um, Penny, would you like to, to kick us off with some information and an update? Sure, Lisa, thank you. I'd be glad to do that. Can everybody hear me okay? Let me check that first. Okay, good deal. All right, so I am Penny Hall, the Chief Operations Officer for the West Piedmont and Central Virginia Health there Districts. Are participants in the meeting. This meeting is Recorded. You have been added to the waiting room. You cannot talk or listen until the host admits you to the meeting. Am I good to go, Lisa and Sharon? Okay. <laughs> Just didn't want to overspeak that. Um, so as the chief operations officer, I'm responsible for not only operational needs in the districts, but also budget, finance, and certainly emergency preparedness and response. Um, so the West Piedmont Health District, I think most individuals here on this call understand, but just to give a framework, that includes Franklin County, the city of Martinsville, Henry County, and Patrick County. So we serve four um, distinct localities within our district. And the population in this district is around 140,000 individuals. So a, a pretty expansive group um, for, for what we call a small health district. Um, since the coronavirus pandemic began, West Piedmont um, Health District has really been on those front lines in the response effort, certainly working closely with our partners on this call, public safety, healthcare systems, really trying um, all the avenues that we could to stand up initially testing sites at the beginning of this pandemic response effort, and most um, recently our vaccination sites within the district. And I know there's been a lot of discussion around vaccine allocation and how that works and what the district gets and what they do with that vaccine that they receive. So I'll speak a little bit to that. The current vaccine allocation by the Commonwealth through our federal supply chain is currently 161,000 doses. Um, as you may know, this is up 53% from the original allocation of 105,000 doses per week. When those doses are received at the state level, those are then allocated out to the 35 health districts within the Commonwealth. And that allocation is based on a population data um, a calculation that they use to determine the number that each district receives. In the West Piedmont Health District, our current weekly allotment is 1,600 doses. Because of the increase from the federal level to the state, 
We do anticipate that increase beginning next week, which will move us around 1,500 additional vaccines per week. And while this is really great news for our district and certainly getting more shots in arms, we know that it's simply not enough vaccine to cover all of the eligible individuals um, that could get that vaccine currently. There's a lot of information about phase 1A groups, phase 1B groups. I just want to give a little bit of context and definition to those groups. Um, our phase 1A group is comprised of our healthcare personnel, long-term care facility residents and staff, as well as assisted living re residents and staff. Um, that, that group, I think, you know, was our first to roll out when the vaccine was made available. And I think most people understand that group. Where the complexity lies is within the group 1B. Um, within that group, it is a very large group. It is comprised of our frontline essential workers, individuals 65 years of age and older, as well as individuals that are 16 to 64 years of age with high risk medical conditions or disabilities that would increase their risk for severe illness with COVID-19. Upon expanding the vaccine eligibility a little quicker than we expected, the governor certainly issued guidelines to health districts to prioritize this huge jump in the number of individuals eligible. So local health districts have been given the directive to ensure that we are prioritizing 50% of our allocated vaccine weekly to those who are age 65 and older. And then the other half of that allocation would be geared to all other individuals in that phase 1B group. So our essential workers, um, any of those individuals, school teachers, um, fire, police, those individuals would be in that grouping, as well as finishing up some of those 1A healthcare providers. Um, for the most part in our district, we have really made um, a huge impact with that group, but there are always a few um, individuals that still need that vaccine. So we are still working within that group as well. Additionally, within that 1B priority, the governor had given some prioritization to groups. Um, so one of the first things, as we know, the governor wants schools to open safely. They want children back in child care facilities and children back in facilities so we can move um, parents back into the workforce that, that may not be able to work or transitioning back into an at office um, situation with their employment. So certainly school personnel are our first priority, as well as our police, fire, um, first responders, um, certainly local jails, child care facilities. All of those groups are a priority within phase 1B. Um, so as a health care district, we have certainly targeted those groups um, and in partnership with our health care systems have moved into the 65 and older individuals to ensure that we're meeting that 50-50 prioritization. And again, due to the large number that meets that criteria for phase 1A and 1B, we know that it's gonna take several weeks, if not several months, truly to work through this group. Looking at up until the next week, 1600 doses, and then moving that into 3100 doses per week, that's still gonna take some time to get through that level um, of that group. Again, that, that group comprises around 50% of our population. And again, remembering that was around 140,000 individuals in our district. Certainly our strategy from the beginning of the pandemic has certainly been to partner with our healthcare systems, healthcare workers, providers to roll out this vaccine efficiently and effectively. Um, currently, all of our doses, like I said, come to our health district, and then it is our responsibility to allocate that out to those approved providers within our district. So that could be pharmacies, that could be doctor's offices, our hospitals. All of the vaccine that we receive weekly gets allocated to these individuals and to our health departments. Um, as you can imagine, you know, we have around currently 25 approved providers which includes our health departments again, both of our hospital systems, as well as private providers and pharmacies. 
So with all of those providers eligible, meaning that they have done all of the required paperwork and procedures to through CDC agreements to handle, store, and dispense that vaccination, 1,600 doses doesn't go a long way because the Moderna vaccine has to be um, allocated in 100 dose increments. So when we were getting 1,600 doses per week with that many approved providers, you can see easily that not every provider was getting doses every week. Again, just kind of illustrating that, that vaccine shortage that we currently have in our district. And this has made it very difficult um, to, to vaccinate all of the individuals that are on our registration list. And I know that is frustrating to our community as well as to, to us with, with VDH. But certainly as that supply chain increases, we do expect that to be a much more robust response effort. I also want to speak just a little bit to our vaccine dashboard. This is um, a dashboard that shows some significant progress in vaccinations across the Commonwealth. And as of today, and I did check it right before this meeting, the West Piedmont Health District has over 20,000 70 individuals that have had at least one vaccine dose. And then there are 4,790 individuals that have been fully vaccinated, meaning they've had both doses of the Moderna vaccine. We do recognize that there have been some reporting issues with the dashboard and that the numbers specifically for the city of Martinsville don't accurately reflect the vaccines that we know that we have distributed within our locality. Our VDH data team is aware of this issue and are diligently working to correct that data. And that was uh, for the majority caused because of the zip code versus geocoding. As you know, several of the zip codes in city of Martinsville can pull to Henry County. And that's what we were seeing. So while the dashboard looks low, you know, I just want to, to uh, let the panel here and the, the media outlets and the community know that individuals in Martinsville have been vaccinated, far exceeding what you see on that dashboard. Um, we have vaccinated private providers, dentists, funeral home workers, long-term care facility residents and staff. So we know just those alone are greater than the 129 um, vaccinations that are showing on that dashboard currently. Um, last week also, you may remember in the uh, governor's uh, press release, as well as some other um, information that went out to media regarding the standing up of, of a, a pre-registration link um, for individuals in the Commonwealth to have a one portal entry for registration. Um, before this, every health district had a link on their websites and on their Facebook pages that allowed an individual in the community to pre-register for the vaccination. And when the centralized registration site was stood up last week, all of those registrations at the local health district level were integrated and imported into that centralized system. So individuals do not have to go back in to re-register um, for that they were automatically fed over. I know a lot of individuals get anxious about that and wondering, am I on that list? And there is a mechanism with this centralized portal to check that. A citizen can go in, put in their name, date of birth, demographic information, and see that truly they are on that list. And keep in mind, the pre-registration list is just that. It's a pre-registration to get your name on a list. It is not to schedule the vaccine. That will come later. And like I spoke of earlier, some of the challenges of vaccination efforts being a little slow right now due to our vaccine supply, but the pre-registration is the mechanism to get vaccinated. Um, that is the first step to get your name on the list. Without that, you're not in queue, so to speak, to get that vaccine. Additionally, um, last week, the governor announced the launching of our centralized call center so we recognize that, especially in some of our rural communities, there are individuals who cannot you know, have access to it, the internet or do not have a computer or may not wish to register online. Individuals can call our centralized call center and that number is 1-877-829-4682. 
This is a seven day a week um, call center that is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, um, certainly there are interpreter services. Um, there are Spanish um, interpreters readily available, but there are also over 100 um, translators that are ready should that need arise for individuals calling. So there is a mechanism for individuals to register, be it through that call center on the phone or through the computer um, site, which is vaccinatevirginia.gov. And again, the pre-registration, I think that's one of the key things. I know I've heard frustration within our communities and groups and individuals that I speak with is not understanding exactly what that pre-registration means. So, the, so that is not scheduling the vaccine. I just wanna make that clear that it is a pre-registration to get an individual on the list and in the queue to receive that vaccine as we move down the list. And that, you know, when we set up our pods or what we call points of dispensing or vaccine clinics, um, these are clinics, and I know that's an, another frustration. People hear about those and wonder, how did people get to those pods? How did they get their name included? And again, it's all through that list. That centralized registration link is how, how we pull for our, our points of dispensing or pods, um, which are closed appointments. Um, so, so individuals, you know, really need to understand that to get the appointment, you have to go through the pre-registration link and you will be contacted. That is how we set up all of our points of dispensing and clinics um, through the health department. So I just wanted to kind of um, end with that and also let individuals know, we, we know that people are anxious and they're very um, ready to get the vaccine, which is a good thing. You know, we've done some good marketing around that and I'm, I'm pleased to see that. But please know that if we have, you know, at a pod, if there is um, someone who does not show up for a vaccine and there's what we call a leftover dose or an extra dose, we then attempt to go back through our registration list again. That's how this, all of the um, clinics and how all of our appointments are set are through that list. So we will go back to that list to call individuals who may be able to come to that site um, on a very short turnaround notice. Um, so we don't encourage um, certainly individuals finding a pod, camping out there all day, awaiting that leftover dose. Um, because again, we're working through that registration list. So even if you are staying there all day, you're, you're not going to get that vaccine potentially. So I just want to leave that there. And if I will entertain any questions, I guess, I don't know, Lisa if, or Sharon, if we're doing those at the end after the speakers, or if you want to do those now. I think we'll, we'll hold those to the end, Penny, if that's okay. And um, I didn't know if Nancy or Bobby, who are also on with the um, Virginia Department of Health, if they had anything to add, or if you're the main spokesperson today. We don't have anything to add. I think Penny covered it pretty thoroughly. Okay. Just wanted to make sure of that. So thank you, Penny and um, Bobby and Nancy, and for everything you guys are doing through the health department for our, for our state and community. Um, why don't we move on to um, public safety, and maybe we'll start with Matt with Henry County, Matt Tatum, to see um, what their update is. Good morning, and thank you for this opportunity to join us and get the message out into our community. Uh, from Henry County, we're excited to partner with all the uh, providers that are uh, have the vaccine and are able to administer the vaccine to our community. Uh, we've already partnered uh, with several events uh, that are taking place in the community. Each and every one of them, I think, are a success. Um, this hall has already alluded to. It's really the vaccine supply is uh, what creates such a backlog. And uh, I can assure the citizens of Henry County that uh, we're administering every single dose that we have available to us uh, in the most rapid and efficient manner that we possibly can. Uh, a couple of things that I would uh, like to reiterate and reemphasize is when we do these community pods, they are by appointment only. Uh, every pod that we've had so far, we've had to turn people away uh, that come uh, and are wanting their vaccine. And we know that you want your vaccine, but they are by appointment only because the 
uh, numbers of vaccines are so limited. Uh, so please uh, help us to be more efficient and, and it also uh, prevents you from wasting your time uh, sitting around all day and uh, or committing a day to come out. And uh, I just know in a recent pod, uh, it wasn't even scheduled to start until 11 o'clock in a day. And I got there about 8.30 to start sitting up and there was already five vehicles with people waiting that were not on the list and they just showed up wanting to get a vaccine. And um, as much as I appreciate that and people wanting to get the vaccine, uh, we just can't operate in that manner. It is by appointment only. And uh, the other thing I would uh, like to emphasize to the community is the registrations for these pods is solely done through Virginia Department of Health. Uh, I'm getting at least a dozen phone calls and a dozen emails each and every day wanting to register for these. And your Department of Public Safety, your fire department, your rescue squads, we don't have the ability to do that. Uh, all registrations to be put on the waiting list must go through the phone number or the website through Virginia Department of Health. Uh, but we uh, are excited to be able to partner with uh, all of our partners, uh, SOVA, uh, Department of Health, uh, Carillion uh, is even uh, getting on board to help us with partnerships and um, we're, we're happy to assist in any way we can to get these vaccines out so that our community can return to an established new normal. Thanks, Matt. We appreciate that update. And John, um, if you would like to give us an update to um, as what's going on in the city of Martinsville. Sure. Uh, we had a site at the high school a few weeks ago. That was a first dose site. We partnered with Sova Health on that one. Uh, a lot of what I have to say echoes what Matt said. Uh, we do give every dose that we have available. Um, we are adamant that we're not going to waste any doses. And we have had a lot of people show up that are not registered and they will sit there and wait all day. Um, we, we do try to go off the list that the health department has provided. Uh, Penny has spoke about that, as well as the numbers that uh, are reflected on the website, not been as accurate. And I appreciate her going over that. Um, I have had a lot of questions about the doses in Martinsville and why our numbers are so low. Uh, Penny alluded to that and, and I think Tori can expand on that a little bit more as well. Um, we are looking to partner with the health department and the hospital as far as setting up a site possibly bi-weekly. Um, our first trial run may be next week. We haven't got that solidified yet, but once we do, we will get some information out there as to where it will be and the times and uh, who all we will be serving. That's about all that I have. John, thank you so much um, for giving us the update for the city of Martinsville. Uh, Tori, would you um, like to start us out with the hot from the hospital from Sova Health? Yes, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, so first I'd like to do is make a couple introductions. I have a few people here that are joining us. Dr. Sharanda Gunn-Nolan is our chief medical officer for both Martinsville and Danville. So I wanted to introduce her because she is just a wealth of information in terms of uh, being able to educate the public in such a way that everyone can really understand. So I, I, did, I did want to make mention that she's here today and, and available to, to answer any of those um, specific questions related to that. I also have with me Heather Ash uh, there. You'll see uh, she's the director of pharmacy here at the Martinsville campus. She's also uh, been designated uh, our vaccine coordinator. Uh, so she has been coordinating many, much of these efforts um, with both the Virginia Department of Health as well as our emergency management services here with both Matt, John, um, and Chris Schrader. Also have with us, of course, Kelly Fitzgerald, who is our uh, communications director for both Martinsville and Danville. She also is our marketing director for both campuses. So just wanted to start with that. Um, I do want to make mention, and I won't belabor some of what's already been 
uh, discussed here today, but uh, we did receive our first shipment of Pfizer vaccine, as you remember, um, that was the vaccine that is a sub-zero freezer uh, vaccine. So we have to keep that at a certain temperature. So we were one of the few in the state that was able to receive that uh, mid-December. Uh, the day we received that was on December the 15th and we started vaccinating that very day. Uh, we vaccinated 15, uh, gave 15 doses uh, that very day to our hospital staff. Um, we continued our vaccination efforts um, as we move forward. We, we uh, had vaccinations four days a week for our hospital staff and then quickly moved into our emergency uh, management services um, after speaking with Penny uh, and her team there at Virginia Department of Health. We wanted to make sure that we could include anyone that we could here at the hospital sites so that we could rapidly get through that phase 1A as Penny had mentioned previously. And the reason why I wanted to do that collectively is we knew that phase 1B was coming. And phase 1B was where the bulk of the population was going to be, where we needed to really focus our vaccination efforts. And so over the course of time, you know, we've been able to successfully, uh, as of February 23rd, our total doses that we've administered has been 4,704 um, here, uh, either by way of hospital clinic sites or by our community pods. Um, our community pods, we have um, hosted five community vaccination pod clinics in the community. Um, as Matt and John had mentioned, uh, we are planning for those as we move into the foreseeable future. Uh, Penny and her team there at Virginia Department of Health um, has been doing their very best to make sure that we are, have um, as much vaccine supply as we can. Um, and then we are rapidly getting that out to the public. Um, so I just wanted to just to kind of reiterate some of those things uh, that was mentioned before. And also just some system numbers because I think it's really helpful to understand um, Sova Health, as you know, comprises both Martinsville and Danville campus. And then as a system, we have administered more than 14,000 uh, COVID vaccine doses across the two campuses. Um, and we have a wide radius that we serve, um, as you know, Danville, Pennsylvania County, as well as Martinsville, Henry County, and uh, Patrick County as well. We've been also uh, helping in efforts in Patrick County. So uh, just wanted to make mention of that. Um, can't think of anything else that hasn't already been said, uh, but I can't say enough that without our emergency management services staff, uh, we could not stand up these pods. They have been absolutely instrumental and key in everything that we've been doing. Uh, Matt often says, um, coined this term long ago, that um, EMS is just an extension of the hospital, and this is just another example of that. So Thank you to you two and uh, Chris, I'm not sure if he's on this call, but um, also want to make mention uh, to him as well. Thank you. Tori, um, is anyone else from the hospital going to give an update? I think they're here ready to answer any questions you may have. I think, uh, I think that's our update for today. Okay, so if I've not overlooked anyone then, um, let's start um, with questions and um, We'll, we'll go ahead and Charles, uh, we'll let you start with the questions if you have some for anyone. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, I guess the big question for you know everybody is 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 when do you think we we're out of the clear? I mean, you know, and, and is it, when do you think um, we, can, we can start getting back to normal? I'll point that toward um, the, uh, the 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 lady that represents the Department of Health, and then maybe like a Matt Tatum. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate that question. Um, you know that is a great question. Honestly, um, you know I'm not sure that I can give a, a good answer to that. Um, certainly, I know we all want that quicker than not. Um, you know, I think certainly vaccine supply increasing is a forward step um, to, to reaching that goal. Um, you know, perhaps Dr. Gunnolan that's on the call could give more of a medical um, background to that. But certainly, you know, when you think of where we've came in a year, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's been a long, hard year. 
Um, but we have certainly moved into a place where at least we see some light at the end of that tunnel. Um, when that day will come where we will be at a, some semblance of normal, um, you know, that, that kind of remains to be seen. I think again, just practicing good public health measures, wearing your mask, um, social distancing, washing hands, even after vaccination is very important. Um, so I will let if there's anyone else or Dr. Gunnolan on a with a medical aspect or even Matt, anybody that wants to give some other comment to that. I don't mind. Um, so 70 to 90 percent of the population has to be vaccinated before herd immunity would be applicable. Um, at this point, we're not even close to 70 or 90 percent of the population. Obviously, increasing vaccine numbers will increase the speed at which we can get back to normal. Um, the biggest thing is the vaccines that are out right now do not um, minimize or prevent spread, according to latest research. So our, our concern is as patients or population gets vaccinated, those that are not vaccinated, um, people will get lax or comfortable not wearing masks, not social distancing, not doing proper hand hygiene, and we'll just perpetuate this issue of continued spread. So until we get that 70% minimum of the population vaccinated, uh, we're, we're in this for the long haul. Obviously, um, seeing everybody's face is, is a nice change and we wanna get back to that sooner than later and be able to meet in person. Um, our hope is before the end of the year, we would be able to reach that target, but it just depends on acceptance of vaccine um, and vaccine supply are our two biggest rate limiting steps. And Charles, thank you for that question. It's a very valid question. I know so many of us are concerned about uh, when can we return to uh, normal, or I prefer to use the term new normal. Uh, and um, it, it, it's really hard to put a time date on it. Uh, there's many different studies out there that show different models. Uh, I think the most aggressive one that I have read is uh, late spring of 2021. Uh, I think that is super aggressive. Uh, so I, I think uh, it's really hard to put a date on it. But most, when I'm looking at the, the everyone on this call, uh, most all of us can remember when we learned of this disease called AIDS and the panic that took place in our community and the fears that were established and uh, the different changes that took place uh, in all, in all uh, spectrums, healthcare and, and everything. And, uh, as we learned more about that disease, uh, we learned more about what needed to be done and what systems needed to be kept in place and what systems could be relaxed. Uh, and, and I think the same thing is gonna happen with COVID. I mean, the disease is still less than a year, I mean, just a little over a year old in knowledge. There has been tremendous amount of research that has been done. We have learned so much about this disease far more than we knew a year ago. And as we learn more about it, uh, we will identify what processes uh, are need to be kept in place and what processes we can relax on in addition to establishing that herd immunity. So it, it, it's really hard to put a date on it. Uh, I think everybody wants it sooner than later, but I also think we, we need to be smart and wise in how we do that and not relax uh, things too quickly and, uh, and just uh, I think we need to accept that there will be a new normal. Uh, we will not return back to prior to COVID. Uh, we know that COVID's here and um, it, it just, whenever you have a devastating event such as this, or even something like 9-11 taking place, things change and you establish a new normal. Uh, we're Americans, we're Virginians. Uh, we will uh, overcome this and we will uh, establish a new normal and we will remove to our productive society again. Charles, do you have any other questions? I'm good. Thank y'all for doing this. I think y'all need to continue doing it until we get back to normal. We'll do it as much as we possibly can, Charles, and thank okay. you. All right. Okay. Um, Kendall Jackson with WDBJ7. Um, Kendall, do you have questions for anyone? Yeah. Um, yeah, with the uh, 16 extra, 1,600 extra doses coming in, you know, what does that do for you guys uh, to be able to expand your operations? Will you see more mass vaccination clinics? You know, will, how, how much of an impact will that have on the process here? Thank you, Kendall, for that question. So 
certainly, you know, that's going to increase our ability to put more shots in arms and um, enhance vaccination efforts in our district. One thing um, that we have done in our West Piedmont Health District from the beginning, because um, we have had a small allocation, and even with this increase of 1,500 additional doses, it still is a small number in comparison to other health districts. But we've been what I call plainfully, uh, purposely planful in how we are looking at making sure that we have what I call touch points or vaccination um, within each locality of the district. And as our public safety um, managers on this call know, as well as our uh, SOBA hospital team, this is something that we feel passionately about to ensure that we don't just have one massive pod, but we really have clinics and pods running throughout the week and in different areas of our uh, health district. Again, we encompass four different localities, Franklin County, um, Henry County, City of Martinsville and Patrick County. And we wanna ensure that we have something available to each of those communities. Alrighty, and then um, also when it comes to the numbers in Martinsville, uh, are some of those Martinsville numbers showing up in, in the Henry County data? Is is that where those vaccine doses are popping up? At? And then also, do you have a number of how many folks in Martinsville that you all believe have been vaccinated so far? Um, yes, I can speak to that as well. So yes, the, most of those numbers are being pulled to our Henry County data. Um, you know, because the dashboard already has some incorrect information showing for city of Martinsville, rather than give a guesstimate, I would prefer to wait till our VDH team really extracts that data, puts it in the correct setting, and then we can message that. So people hear the new correct numbers instead of just giving another subset of numbers that may not be as accurate. And uh, Penny, I know um, from the SOVA Health, and of course this is not inclusive as Penny said, but just to give some comfort to those that are residents of Martinsville City, I can tell you, uh, we did do some data mining here just from what we've administered here at SOVA Health. And I can tell you that we have 1,574 Martinsville residents that have been vaccinated, or, I'm sorry, doses that have been given uh, to Martinsville residents uh, to date. Um, so I, I cannot speak in total, as Penny said, you know, there's many more efforts that are going on outside of what's happening here at SOVA Health. Um, and Penny will definitely be able to give you from the Virginia Department of Health the more comprehensive uh, data set. But I did want to share that today because I do think it helps uh, give some comfort to the Martinsville residents that we are indeed um, uh, being very aggressive in our ability to vaccinate all localities. All right, thank you. Then one last question here. Um, you, you mentioned earlier, it'd be a few more months to work through phase 1B. Should folks who are, if I'm correct there, from what you said earlier, are folks who are not in 1B, should they still go ahead and start registering uh, on the state website and, and whatnot there? So the registration is for, and there will be a subset that, you know, it takes us a couple minutes to register on that link, or if you call our, our call center number at the state level, um, but there are specific questions. So if you are not meeting the criteria outlined for 1B, you would not be registering at this time. Thank you. Okay. Um, Bill, do you have questions um, for anyone? Bill uh, Wyatt uh, with the Martinsville Bulletin. Okay. No, I'm sorry, we weren't able to hear your question. Okay, are you able to hear me now? Yes, very, very clearly now. Thank you. Good, thank you. Um, first of all, th this is um, was overdue, and uh, thank you all very much for uh, for doing this today. Uh, a lot of the information that you're providing uh, has been um, uh, answered through questions that we've been asking, and until today, haven't been getting them. Um, first of all, I wanted to ask the, the, the hospital, uh, uh, Tori, can you confirm the number of vaccines that you said the city of, that, that, that you have administered at the Martinsville uh, site? Yes, I can confirm uh, based on our data mining that we have here, 
again, Bill, I do want to make sure I make mention this is only the ones that we've sponsored here, working with uh, the five pod sites that we have, um, as well as our hospital clinic. So, but yes, I can confirm Martinsville uh, zip codes uh, that we've searched uh, that we have administered 1,574 doses to Martinsville City. Okay, and then through the SOVA site in Martinsville, uh, collectively, how many, what, what's your total number? Our total number is 4,704, and that is as of February the 23rd. Remember, we have vaccine clinics happening almost every day, so that number will change and vary, but that is the number of doses that we've given in total. Um, also, this is inclusive of uh, second doses, um, and I know that gets confusing because we have the first shot doses and the second shots. Uh, but remember that our phase 1A, we're, we're fairly far into our, our second shot series. Um, so when we're talking about the 1,574 residents, some of that will be tied up into our community-based clinics, which we started on January the 28th. And so you can do the math there. You can understand that we've not really been able to get into our second shot clinics. We started those, I think, effective today. Um, so we're starting our second shot clinics for our community-based uh, members. I hope that answers your question, Bill. It does, it does. Thank you very much. Um, a question for uh, Penny Hall. And Penny, first of all, let me just uh, uh, say thank you for being here today. That's the information that you've given today is of great value and it's much, much appreciated. Um, I wanted to ask, um, First of all, it's good news that you're saying that people are able to verify uh, that they that their pre-registration has been accepted, because one of the questions that we've been asked is, how do I know that I'm actually in the system? And you're saying, I want to confirm that, you're saying that you can verify that now. That is correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, they should be able, there is a, the ability within that system. And I know that was a frustration bill for um, individuals when we had those links individually posted on district websites, um, certainly in West Piedmont, because it they did not have that capability. It's behind standing up this centralized uh, registration link um, with the state was that there was this one entry, you know, one place people would register and there's that one list. So it's not multiple list um, that people were having to look through um, to schedule vaccines, but also for that um, capacity to go in there and check that they are registered. Okay. And, you know, I'm speaking um, for those that want to know, myself included, my wife and I are both in 1B we're registered, we're waiting. Um, and the, the, the next question would be, is there any consideration given to making it so that someone who is pre-registered to know where they are in line? Um, it's sort of like, you know, when you call a company uh, and they put you on hold, you get a, a uh, you know, the approximate wait time is, is 35 minutes. Uh, couldn't there be something or is there any consideration given toward implementing some kind of a system like that for this, uh, for this vaccine? And I would say, Bill, and I heard our uh, vaccine coordinator, Dr. Avula, mention this on a press briefing last Friday when that question was posed to him. Um, because we do, as I mentioned, we have this uh, prioritization to look at 50% of our population, 50% of our vaccine going to our 65 and older population, and then the other 50% for different groups. So from that list, we're extracting out the, that criteria for you know, our pods or points of dispensing we're setting up. So giving someone a point in line and then you know we're moving some school employees off of a list to set up a school um, point of dispensing clinic would you know it would move that data continuously so it really would not serve a purpose truly to know I'm um, you know 1200 on that list because it could go up or down if we're creating um, targeted pods to meet that governor's um, expectation with the 50/50 split of our dosage if that makes sense Okay, um, well, how, how are people notified? Is it email, a phone call, a text, or what, what you know, when they get the notification? Email, 
If they leave an email, it would go through that mechanism. Otherwise, it would be a phone call. What if a person who is pre-registered is notified and they miss the notification? What do they do then? When you say miss the notification, can you specify what you're asking there? If, if they give their email address and they fail to check their email and just don't see it. So we will attempt email and phone calls um, for that. You know, and unfortunately, as we're setting up these clinics, they're still going to be in queue. But if they're not responding, say we, we, we reach out to them and they do not respond, you know, we do need to go ahead and get our clinics together. So they would still be in the list, um, but they, they yes, they, they may be on the next um, clinic that we establish. Okay, so, so what I'm saying, if they miss their call, uh, is it, does it become necessary for them to re-register or you're saying that the system will, will uh, keep them on the list and then um, uh, call them for a second opportunity? Correct, correct. They do not, the, the pre-registration link is not our scheduling system. Right, okay. All right, thank you so much. And again. it is just getting, so, so it's two separate things. Yeah, sure, you're welcome. Thanks, Bill. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Have I missed anyone or does anyone have any other questions? Um, since I'm not hearing from anyone, um, I just want to thank everyone again for participating today. And I think all of these um, updates and the questions and answers at the end by our media are really going to help um, the community. I think this is going to help to bring folks kind of back together again and give everyone a great understanding as how we are moving forward, because we definitely are. And you guys are doing a great job of, of getting us forward. And we do appreciate that. So if we don't have any other comments, um, I would just say, um, hope everyone has a great day.